Hey guys, this is Tyler Zombro with Tread Athletics, and today I wanted to talk about the effects of release side and release height on pitch design and pitch performance. So this is something that we started to take a deep dive into and has led to some really intriguing conversation, something that we definitely have to dive more into to really figure out all of the effects from it. But something I know that's been going on in my head is considering the effect of the posture you throw out of and where your release point is on how your pitch truly profiles. So we all know in today's game, we chase outlier movement qualities for predictable success. We're always looking to improve vertical break uh, on a fastball, for instance, with carry, promote more sink if you're a sinker guy, sweep the slider more, more depth on the changeup, more run, uh, more depth on the curveball, maybe more sweep whatever that is. So we have all these things going on that are supposed to improve pitch performance, but I think there are some variables in there that, that really aren't quantified quite as much. I know something I would love to do is find an exact metric to quantify deception, something that's very difficult to do, but looking at, again, release height, release side, vertical approach angle, horizontal approach angle, We've already touched on vertical approach angle in a prior video. If you haven't watched that, give it a view. But really these release numbers do affect how your pitch profiles and what it looks like to a hitter. So with that in mind, I'm gonna to touch on a few examples. Um, first, we can talk about release height. So if you're releasing the ball from a high slot versus a lower slot, and what that means in terms of vertical movement. So predictably, if you're throwing out of a higher posture, guys expect more vertical break. If you're throwing out of a lower posture, guys expect less. Uh, so with that in mind, if you're a guy who's throwing from a super high slot and just chasing after that carry, well, maybe it doesn't actually project as having that elite movement. On the other end, if you're a guy who has less vertical break, but you're throwing from the low slot, uh, you can shoot the ball up in the zone, that might have a better deceiving effect. Looking at release side, this is something that has become very prominent in my head with the sweeper coming in. Uh, I think about a lot of guys who are throwing out of higher slots from the left side of the rubber, for instance, being a right-hander. And if they were to throw a sweeper in the zone at negative 15 to negative 20 horizontal break, what is the actual horizontal approach angle of that pitch? That's something that's been going through my mind because I think essentially that pitch flattens out in order to have it in the zone. And in doing that, I then contrast it by saying, what if you're a guy that's throwing from the right side of the rubber with a little less horizontal break, is that pitch more deceiving because it has a steeper horizontal approach angle? There's just a lot of variables there that need to go into consideration uh, because so many people are gonna cheat to get to these certain pitch metrics but they might not play how we think they do in a vacuum. So looking at release height and release side, uh, again, certain ways to quantify deception, something that we can take a deeper look at because again, I think the horizontal approach angle and vertical approach angle do offer a lot of insight into that deception piece. Uh, and that's something that we need to take a look at on the pitch design side so we can better translate that to end game performance. A good example of the difference in how the ball moves and how it appeals to the eye is looking at release height with gyro sliders. So a lot of guys who do have elite vertical break, having that really good carry on their fastball, oftentimes it's hard for them to get down to a gyro slider just because of how much backspin they're used to inducing on the ball. However, if that pitch is coming from a higher slot, it can still allude to a lot of depth, even if they're only getting that slider to you know, positive five to positive 10 vertical break. On the other end of that, if you're throwing a gyro slider from a lower slot, it can probably still look like the same depth. I've had plenty of guys who are throwing nearly identical sliders in terms of the metrics, but a guy who's throwing a gyro slider out of a higher slot, that ball alludes to a lot more depth than somebody who's doing it from a bit lower. Uh, and seeing how that grades out, uh, we recently hosted a pro day here at Tread Athletics and seeing how scouts kind of take notice of that, how they're grading out pitches. There's certainly a lot of deceptive pieces that go into that. So keeping that in mind when you're watching a guy throw is actually utilizing your eyes and what that tells you as opposed to simply being married to the metrics all the time. Something for you guys to try. Uh, if you're a right-handed pitcher and you're throwing a sweeping slider from the left side of the rubber, not seeing the results you want, flip over to the right side and see if that deceptive piece changes. Uh, that goes the exact same for a lefty 
just invert that scenario. If you're a guy who's maybe playing a heavy arm side change up, but you can't throw it well from the right side of the rubber, try shifting to the left. Uh, again, there are a lot of deceptive pieces with that uh, release side number that you can manipulate in terms of your placement on the mound. So feel free to play around with that and give it a shot. That's all I've got for today. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.